Hello everyone, my name is Helen Savage and I'm Congenicus Lead Clinical Scientist for Product Innovation. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you about automating variant classification to maintain quality, standardise interpretation and reduce turnaround times. Today I'll start by outlining the current situation and what role automation may have to play in rare disease reporting, followed by a description of my investigation into the potential impacts of automating interpretation. I'll finish this session with a case study highlighting how automation can be used to reduce analysis time down to as little as five minutes. So why do we need automation? Well, we know there are around seven to 8,000 different rare diseases and up to 80% of these have some form of genetic component. They cover a wide variety of phenotypes from single system disorders such as isolated deafness or cardiac defects to complex multi-system disorders and syndromes. Rare disease patients are a diagnostically heterogeneous population with many relevant gene lists for the analysis of these patients covering almost 2,000 different targets. This means that in a lot of cases, panel testing isn't always fit for purpose. Achieving a diagnosis has a huge impact on patients and their families, from simply providing an answer to questions such as why am I or my child different, to being able to offer family planning options, better developmental support for patients, information about the future, and access to participation in clinical trials and better patient outcomes. As testing demand increases, driven by greater accessibility and reducing costs, we're encountering more complex cases in which a genetic disorder has not been confidently identified. With the increasing access to exome and genome testing, the interpretation of this data is taking longer and longer, as even the most highly skilled and experienced individuals cannot be an expert on every gene they encounter. Yet this is the interpretation challenge we're faced with on a daily basis. As we need more time to familiarise ourselves with previously unencountered genes and variants, the time taken to complete a case has been increasing. With a finite workforce and limited time for analysis, this is leaving many with a lack of time to dedicate to those complex cases, leading to a risk of reduced analytical yield. In fact, a recent ACMG report identified that 71% of clinical laboratories are at or approaching capacity which is no surprise given a standard case analysed using existing workflows can take around 90 minutes to analyse and report. Automation of repetitive tasks is already used widely in the diagnostic setting to support consistent, high quality data collection and sample processing. We see this as the use and development of automated phenotyping tools, patient record to HPO translators, DNA extraction and liquid handling robots, automated library preparation and sequencing, followed by bioinformatics processing. Reducing the amount of human intervention required to complete these tasks reduces the risk of human error and provides more streamlined workflows in the laboratory. And I don't think any of us would want to try and run something like a high throughput service without high degrees of automation in our sample preparation workflows. But what about variant interpretation? Are we ready to take the leap and accept programmatic help to interpret these data as well for the benefit of achieving quality, consistent patient results? Well, what wasn't really clear until now was to identify points where the process could really be streamlined or made more efficient, or how many of our routine cases involved repeating work that had previously been performed on recurrent variants. So, I performed a review of previously analysed cases to determine the frequency of recurrent variants to estimate the impact of automating repeated interpretations. A subset of 19,116 previously analysed cases in Congenica were reviewed to determine the proportion of diagnoses resulting from recurrent pathogenic or likely pathogenic variants. These cases were from a variety of referral reasons, from small panel tests to whole genome with a range of family structures, singletons, duos, trios, etc. To check quality and determine time savings of the automated results, I processed three cases using the Congenica Express pipeline and performed a manual second check of the interpretations. What I found was 39% of the 19,000 cases had at least one variant considered pathogenic or likely pathogenic. Just over half of these variants were present in two or more individuals and classified similarly. This represented 21% of all analysed cases and 53% of all diagnosed cases. 
Review and report of the three test cases took between five to eight minutes, depending on the number of variants that had been identified and needing a second check. Each variant was classified consistently using the automated pipeline and accompanied by a complete set of supporting evidence, including the variant classification, associated publications, ACMG criteria and supporting evidence, and interpretive comments from previous analyses. All inheritance patterns were correctly taken into account and no unconsented carrier status or secondary findings were highlighted. So I'd like to finish off by presenting a case study to demonstrate the potential impact of automating interpretation in a rare disease laboratory. This patient was referred as a singleton at 11 months old because she had neonatal conjugate hyperbilirubinemia, hypotonia and was admitted to paediatric intensive care with status epilepticus. Rapid whole exome sequencing was performed and the data were processed through our automation pipeline with a 153 gene neonatal epileptic encephalopathy virtual gene panel applied. No family history was reported. Her sample was sequenced and processed through Congenica for analysis and reporting this case took approximately eight minutes. So Cogenica Express identified and automatically classified two variants in the alt H7A1 gene. This gene is associated with autosomal recessive pyridoxine dependent epilepsy, consistent with the phenotypes described in this young girl. The automated results here are being viewed in the Congenica audit tab. The variants may be a mix of human mares and automated decisions for any laboratories performing a supplementary deep dive of all or auto ACMG highlighted variants but these can be distinguished by the user recorded as making the decision. Automated decisions here are being made by the system user. The system also records the components used to generate these automated results so you're going to get that fed into your standard audit trail. Once the review is complete a report could be generated using a suitable report template in either a human readable or computer readable format. This report may include any automated variants, including any amendments, plus additional novel variants identified during any supplementary deep dive review. Being able to screen large numbers of variants quickly means that preliminary reports can be produced rapidly, enabling rapid confirmation and downstream treatment or action if appropriate. This family received their answers quickly enabling clinicians to change her treatment regime and stop her seizures prior to any permanent brain damage occurring. In terms of service impact, uh, the system enables a high throughput of cases to reduce your analysis backlog and works just as well using a very large virtual gene panel of, of 4,000 genes here as, as it does using smaller gene panels as shown in this case study. Variants are consistently interpreted between users and as the curated data are controlled by each independent laboratory, you're able to power Congenica Express with data interpreted according to your internal processes to maintain strict quality standards. If you don't have access to a relevant internal data set, these curations may be drawn from alternative sources such as ClinVar, Decipher or by data sharing between laboratories. For example, a specialist renal service may want to swap their curations with a specialist neuromuscular service to share expertise between sites. In conclusion, variant interpretation is time consuming. Recurrent variants are identified in over 20% of cases with a mixed referral background and automating interpretation of these variants significantly reduces the time spent per case from around 90 minutes to five to eight minutes. All of this can be done while maintaining quality, safety and consistent interpretation standards. This extra time leaves uh, additional time and resources to analyse complex cases perhaps less suited to automation to maximise your diagnostic yield of your laboratory. And finally, direct patient benefit can be seen from being able to deliver a rapid diagnosis. So I would like to take this early work further to investigate sources of conflicting interpretation and try to identify an optimal way to resolve any conflicts identified. Finally, I'd like to review the underlying referral reasons to determine if a particular group of patients would benefit more from automation than others to target this technology to those who most need it. Thank you for your attention today. 
I'd like to thank the database administrators at Congenica for helping me query our data to generate the information for this study and to all of our users, clinicians and patients for being part of this analysis. Finally, if you're frequently interpreting recurrent variants and would like to know more about our automation tools, please get in touch. It's simple to get started. For existing Congenica customers, please speak to your support contact and we'll get you set up. If you're new to Congenica, we can also get you started quickly. Just head over to congenica.com slash demo to request a demo call with one of our expert team. I'm hoping that you found this presentation informative and enjoyable. Please enjoy the rest of your day.